Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. We're glad you're here. So, in a past episode of Retro Tech Chris, I guess that's what we call them. Anyway, in a past episode, we talked about doing remote boot from Windows NT 4.0 for a DOS 6.22 installation. And we demonstrated this using RPL. Not long after that video was released, Hank reached out to me, who is a subscriber of the channel, and said, hey, let's find a way to do this in virtualization. Well, what you're gonna see today is the outcome of that, and I'm very excited because now you can try this without having to have a network boot ROM hardware device. So this is really exciting to me. Anyway, what I'm gonna show you today is how to set up a DOS instance using VirtualBox that can remote boot into a Windows NT 4.0 server in which we're going to have to add a custom network card. So this procedure is going to focus on those elements that are different from the last video, and I'm also going to refer you back to that previous video. Now, there is an easy button for all of this, and that's going to be in the form of a ISO image that Hank has put together, which I will link in the description below. You are certainly welcome to try that as well if you want to do things the easy way. Otherwise, stick around and I'll show you the hard way. Let's get started. Since there are a lot of steps, I have created a procedure for this. It is in my Git repository. There's a link in the description of the video. And let's go ahead and go through it. So the concept here, of course, is creating a custom network card added to Windows NT 4.0, which was not originally there. And you can use this procedure for any card, really. We'll be using it for the AMD PCNet 3. So the first thing we're going to do is create a DOS virtual machine. So I've launched VirtualBox, as you see over here. And we're going to select New and type in a name, DOS RPL. The name is important. From there, we can create the memory and hard disk options as defaults. We'll just go ahead and click Next, Next, Next. And then from there, before you know it, we have a virtual machine. OK. So now we're gonna select the virtual machine and you can see I have it selected and go to settings and go to network. And we're going to attach this as a bridged adapter and it's going to be the same adapter we used for our NT 4.0 server. Perfect. The next thing we need to do is grab the first six digits of the MAC address for this adapter. So we can toggle this advanced tab here and grab the first six digits and I'll just paste them in the notepad so we have them for safekeeping. We will need that later in the procedure when we go to set up the NT 4.0 mappings. Okay, we can click OK here. And the next thing we want to do is actually close out VirtualBox completely. So let's go ahead and power down this NT 4.0 server and we'll close that out when it powers down. And we'll also close VirtualBox. And with that complete, we need to download a boot ROM that we can use with the AMD PCNet 3 adapter that we use with VirtualBox. So I'll go ahead and paste this into the browser here and download it. And with that, we can go ahead and extract it. So what we'll do is navigate over to our downloads directory and extract that zip file you see here. And we'll go ahead and install it after that. And it will install itself to this PCNet util boot ROM directory on drive C. So here you see me doing that. We'll go ahead and launch the installer. Next, 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 I agree, whatever have you and finish and it will go ahead and create the output folder and it will be available in that directory. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is launch a DOS prompt and we're going to change into the VirtualBox installation directory. We can change to drive C if needed. I'll go ahead and change to the installation directory of my VirtualBox as you see me doing here. And then from there, we can go ahead and add the boot ROM to our virtual machine. If you did not use the name DOS RPL, please substitute the name you used for your DOS virtual machine below. But we'll type VBOX manage, set extra data, and then we will provide the name of the virtual machine in quotes. And then we can pass the path that you see here, which tells VirtualBox to use a boot ROM essentially. So this VBOX internal, devices, PC BIOS, zero, config, LAN boot ROM. And then from there, we can point to the location of the ROM file. Make sure you grab the file that ends in ROM and not hex. That's important. Great. 
So with that, we can go ahead and start VirtualBox once more and prove that this setting took by clicking on the DOS virtual machine and clicking start, and you'll notice something very peculiar. The first thing we need to do is hit cancel so that we don't try to select a startup disk. We don't need one. And you can see this boots into this Novell Netware Ready firmware. Perfect. We'll go ahead and close this out for now, but we're ready for later. Okay, let's go ahead and start up that NT 4.0 virtual machine again. We have more work to do. So at this point, we're ready to start configuring this installation. You can go ahead and watch my previous video up to the 1221 mark. I'll go ahead and load that up here pretty quickly just so you can see it. And what we will see as we load that, that at the 1221 mark, we are in the RPL manager, which we will be launching here shortly. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to want to do now is go ahead and configure the PCNet3 network card. And the first thing we're going to need is a driver. So let's go ahead and grab this page link here that you see, and we will paste that into a new tab and download the appropriate driver. And the one that we want is going to be this PCNTND.DOS driver. So we'll click on that and it will proceed to download. Now we can go ahead and head over to our downloads directory. And we're going to work to put that PCNTND.DOS file onto a floppy image. And we will use WinImage for that. So here we are in the directory. I'll go ahead and unzip that file so that we can see the contents of the folder. And let's go ahead and navigate in. And lo and behold, there it is. So let's go ahead and launch WinImage like I was talking about and getting ahead of myself, but what else is new? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get WinImage launched and we can just do a file new once we get this launched and choose a 1.44 megabyte floppy. That's the default, I believe. From there, we can say image inject and navigate to the downloads directory. And then from there, we can go ahead and pick that pcntnd.dos file and click open and then yes to inject. From here, it's a matter of doing a file and save as. Be sure to change the type to non-compressed image and give it a name that you can remember. I just called mine as you're seeing here and I saved it to the desktop, perfect. So we can go ahead and close WinImage at this point and we can go ahead and create a virtual floppy adapter on our Windows NT 4.0 virtual machine. But unfortunately, I think we're going to have to power it off first because if we go to the page, we can see everything is read only. So let's go ahead and power this down yet again. Maybe I should have rethought this, but that's okay. And as soon as we turn this off, we will see that VirtualBox basically says, hey, your settings have changed, reload. And from there, we can add a virtual floppy controller. And from there, we can add a virtual floppy disk. And we're just gonna take this and point to the image that we made just a minute ago. So that's on the desktop for me. I'll go ahead and head over there and grab it and we can click open and then okay. And now we're ready to boot up our virtual machine again. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have this file on a floppy disk, we're gonna wanna copy it to the directory that you see in the directions. So let's go ahead and get NT all booted up nice and fast here. We'll launch my computer and navigate to the directory of choice, the WinNT and then it's the RPL directory and then B block and then Endis. So we can go ahead and navigate in there and then I'm gonna navigate back to my computer. I love how these windows pop open like this. <laughs> so old school. And we can go to the floppy drive and find that DOS file and drag it over to that Endis directory. Perfect. Now we are all set for that part. The next thing we need to do is a little bit of configuration and we need to grab two files. Unfortunately, we don't have them pre-ready made, so we're going to steal them. I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory called PCNTND under the bblock directory and then under the netbuoy directory. So here we are. We'll create that new directory, PCNTND, and we're going to steal two files from the elink3 directory, since who doesn't love the 3com etherlink network card? Great card. The two files are going to be protocol.ini and dosbb.cnf. So we'll go ahead and navigate in there. We'll find those two files and copy them. And by the way, in the future, we may do the same thing for Windows 95, just not today. Today we're focused on DOS and we can paste those in there. And now we can start the edit process. So to edit these, the easiest way I find to edit files is to just launch Notepad. And you can drag the files right into Notepad. Super convenient. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. Launch Notepad. We can drag this over just a little bit so we can see what the heck we're doing. And I'll drag protocol.ini into this little Notepad window. And boom, now it's ready to edit. We're going to do a search and replace and look for this E-Link setting, E-L-N-K-3, and replace it with PCNT and D, and do a replace all. Great. Now, after this, there is one minor modification we need to make. The driver name does need to be uppercase. The card is picky. I did run into this problem when going through the procedure, so we'll scroll to the bottom of the file and make that change. And after we have made this change, as you see I have made here, we can go ahead and do a file save and save this protocol.ini, and we are all set there. That's it. So next, we need to modify dosbb.cnf to also reference this PCNTND uh, designation. So I'll go ahead and drag that into Notepad, and we're going to do a very similar search and replace, just like we did just a second ago. And it's going to be nearly identical, except this time we're going to be doing this in capital letters. So there you have it. I don't even know if that matters, but that's what we're doing to keep things consistent. Also going to change the title up here so it's nice and pretty. It says AMD PCNet 3. It doesn't matter, but hey, we're here. We might as well. Perfect. So at this point, we can go ahead and save the file. There's nothing more to do from that perspective, so we're all set there with our artifacts. The next thing we need to do is launch a command prompt so that we can have some fun with the RPL CMD. And remember how I said we're going to need those first six digits of the MAC address? If you didn't write them down, now's a good time to go and get them. Of course, I have them saved here in Notepad. All right, so let's go ahead and launch the RPL CMD command. The first thing we need to do is get a DOS command prompt. So I'll go ahead and do that. I guess we could have launched the command directly, but I'd rather launch a DOS command prompt first. And then we can run RPL CMD and we are presented with this very nice user interface. Um, yeah, okay. This is basically a thin wrapper around a database. So basically we're gonna hit a B key to add some of our boot configuration and we'll add a new entry. It's going to be the parameters that you see here on the right. We'll just type them in one by one, boot name and vendor name, and that's gonna be those first six digits again of the Mac. The BBC file, that's just gonna to point to the NetBuoy file that we have for this particular card. The boot comment, which is nice to see because that will show up in some of the GUIs. And then from there, we can say a window size of zero. Great, so those commands are entered. Okay, so part two, now we're gonna enter the C command and enter some more items. So A to add the enumeration, put in a config name, put in a boot name, put in a dir name, a dir name two, and also a fit shared and a fit personal, which will be next here in just a second. And from there, we can also put in a config comment, which we will see referenced in various GUIs. So we might as well make that nice as well. And then from there, it also does say these parameters are optional, but that's fine. The dir name three and four, we can just press enter. Good. So you can see all of those commands have been entered. Very cool. Next, we're gonna hit the V key and add the vendor information for the card. So if we hit V, we can hit A to add an entry and we're going to put in those first six digits once again of the MAC address and then a vendor comment, which will show up in GUIs. So we'll put something nice in there as well. Great. All right, at this point, we can hit Q to quit this lovely utility and it writes to a Microsoft Access database, I believe. <laughs> How about that? All right, <laughs> cool. At this point, let's go ahead and reboot NT one more time. So we'll go ahead and do that. It will be a lightning round. And once we're rebooted here, we are going to launch the Remote Boot Manager once more. So let's go ahead and launch that, the RPL Manager, and it's gonna complain at us. And at this point, we wanna go ahead and say configure and fix security to make sure all of the files we added have the right permissions associated with them, and then check configurations, which will generate new profiles. So at this point, you're really at a point where you can just follow the rest of the video. I'll go ahead and just make a quick little profile and make a DOS booter, if you will, to see what that looks like but I'm going to select the AMD PCNet 3 configuration for DOS 622. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually start up the uh, DOS virtual machine that you see down here, which is configured for remote boot because quite frankly, this is cool and I really like it. I wanted to show you because I am so excited about this. So there we have it. Before too long, it'll start to boot. And once it does, it'll put an entry in the table 
and we can do our typical convert adapters that we have shown in the other video that I've created. And we can put a workstation name in here. I'm just gonna say virtual and then add, and then the virtual machine will proceed to boot. How cool is that? Great, so at this point, I did a directory listing to see what was there. You can go ahead and return to the other video at time 1221 and see what the story is there for doing other things like configuring TCP IP, etc. Once again, anytime that you see a 3Com Etherlink 3 in that video, think AMD PCNet 3. And I tried to call it a couple of places in the video, but there may be a few more. All right, well, that's what I had for you today. I hope you go and give this procedure a try. This is really a lot of fun. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when I post new videos. If you liked what you saw today, please do give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. In all cases, as always, it's been great having you along for the retro journey and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.